Hello guys and welcome to the step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a Stratocaster. Today I'm going to be setting up my Fender American Standard 2014. This is a guitar I got about six months ago and I last set it up uh, just after I got it, which was back in February. And now we're in July and the setup has changed quite a bit. I assume due to temperature changes, there's too much neck relief and the string action is too high for my liking. So in this video, we're going to set it up properly and try to get it back to where I want it to be. When you set up your instrument, it is very important that you do things in the right order so you can get the best possible setup for your guitar. In this video, we're going to be talking about the scale length, uh, the neck radius, uh, how to set the neck relief, and the string action. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the tremolo bar, but we won't talk too much about the uh, pickups, the electronics, or the nut. So if you have any issues with the nut, I would highly recommend that you go and see a luthier. So before we do anything else, I would like to show you the tools and materials I need for the setup starting with the F1 oil, which is a cleaner and conditioner, and I use this cheap toothbrush to rub the oil against the fretboard. A couple of screwdrivers and pliers to cut the strings. Um, I've got a radius gauge and, very important, feeler gauge to uh, set the neck relief and string action. A contact cleaner for the electronics, so I use this to clean the pots, etc. And then, most importantly, the strings. So this is a pack of uh, Pitbull strings, Silver Series uh, 1046. 1046 are the perfect string gauges for me when I set up a strut in E standard because they give me the perfect string tension. So the first thing we're going to do is to take the old strings out and uh, clean the fretboard. When it comes to the tremolo bar, I prefer to use three springs at the back. I've tried five in the past, but that doesn't really work for me. It gave me a too loose uh, string tension. But I feel like uh, the three springs versus the 1046 strings gives me the perfect tension. Now we've got the new strings on, so now we just need to tune up and make sure that the tremolo bar is set up properly. So I usually make sure that I can fit a guitar pick between the tremolo bar and the body. So let's tune up. I might have to do a few rounds of tuning just to make sure that the tremolo bar uh, is back at where it should be. It can also help to pull the strings a little bit, that might speed up the process. Pull the string, tune up, and then pull, tune up, pull, tune up. So now that the guitar is all tuned up and the tremolo bar is just where I want it, uh, we're going to have a look at the neck relief and how to set up the truss rod. What I mean by neck relief is that uh, we want the neck bent like that. Uh, the alternatives would be um, a straight neck, which would cause a lot of buzzing, and then a back bow, which would make the guitar absolutely unplayable. And we don't want that. It is important to understand some of the specs of the guitar, like the fretboard radius and the scale length. So the scale length of a Fender is 25 and a half inches, while a Gibson would be 24.75 inches. 
So a Gibson is technically a bit shorter than a Fender, resulting in looser string tension, etc. So I personally choose to use heavier strings on a Gibson than on a Fender. The fretboard radius of a modern day Fender is 9.5 inches as opposed to the 12 inches of a Gibson. But the vintage style Fenders had 7.25 inches, so way more rounded, 9.5 a bit less rounded, and then the 12 inches of a Gibson nearly flat. So the Gibson can deal with way less neck relief than a Fender. So now that we know the fretboard radius and the scale length for this guitar, we just need to look up uh, the recommended neck relief on the Fender website. And what they recommend is dot zero ten inches. Um, and to find out about the current neck relief, we put a capo here on the first fret. And then we need to hold down the low E string here on the last fret. And we can uh, measure the neck relief here on the eighth fret by sticking the uh, uh, feeler gauge under the 8th fret and I can feel that uh, the neck relief is higher than the dot zero ten, which means that I will have to adjust the neck put the allen key in here and uh, go a little bit towards the left so tighten the neck so we're straightening the neck out a little bit uh, once I've done that Guitar should be a bit sharp, so we need to tune up. So once I've done the tuning, I put the cable back on and we measure again. Still too high, so. We'll to another small step. Small turns like that can do quite a lot, so make sure you don't do too much. And we need to tune up again. And let's try again. That's more like it. So I will go with this neck relief for now. You can go with the recommendation of Fender or any other guitar company uh, to begin with, and then you can sort of work your way around it. I mean, that's not always the perfect setting, but uh, it's always a good starting point, whether it's um, on, on the neck relief or the um, string action. So, now I've got the neck relief set according to the Fender guidelines and the guitar is playing pretty well but I somehow feel like I could go one step further as in the neck could go a little bit more straight but uh, I will leave it as is for now because uh, it might take a couple of days for the guitar to sort of uh, adjust to the new settings so I will maybe revisit it in, in a couple of days. If you're enjoying this video and you find it helpful, please hit the like button because that will really help me reaching more people. It is very important that we tune the guitar to standard tuning after every little adjustment that we make, whether it's on the string action, as in on the saddles, or for the neck relief on the truss rod, because uh, we always need to tune the guitar back to standard tuning before we make any more measurements, because otherwise our measurements are not going to be correct. So now on to the string action. What I try to do here is that I estimate 1.8 millimeters on the 17th fret. So I've got my feeler gauge here uh, set at 1.8 millimeters combined. Put it here on the 17th fret. And you can see that uh, the string is way higher than that. So I try to lower the string until I reach that. So. I may have put the string this high last time just to avoid some buzzing or whatever, but honestly, with a strut, don't uh, worry too much about buzzing because a tiny bit of buzz just sounds really cool on a strut. I mean, just think about like Steve Ray Warren or, or other strut players, uh, their guitars used to buzz quite a bit, so don't worry too much about that. 
So now we're going to put the string action on all six strings to 1.8 millimeters from the 17th fret. Fender actually recommend 1.6 millimeters, but we're going to stick with 1.8 just because I prefer to do it that way. You can do it differently if you like. 1.8 is low enough for me. And uh, so once we've done that, the subtles will be round just like the uh, radius on the fretboard. So it will all work. Uh, it's just very important to keep in mind that the subtles should be even as in the uh, individual subtles. So the legs of the subtles are both evenly set. I've set all the strings to 1.8 millimeters from the uh, 17th fret and I have to say it's playing pretty nicely but I will leave it as is just like with the neck relief and then come back to it in a couple of days or so um, but what I haven't done is that I haven't sort of fine-tuned it so I will have to use the um, radius gauge and Put it here on the, on the strings, just to make sure that the um, the radius is perfect, and I can adjust that on the subtles. Uh, so this really comes handy if you want to get it perfect. Uh, also, what a lot of people do is that they keep the bass strings slightly higher than the treble strings. So you might want to experiment with that, uh, but I find it really nice as it is, and uh, I think. We're on to the last bit of this setup video, which is the intonation. So as you can hear, it's sounding pretty much in tune, in an open hand position, and not far off on the 12th fret. So pretty close, but what usually happens when you adjust the neck relief and the string tension is that uh, you will have to adjust the um, intonation as well. I've got my tuner ready and a Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to play a harmonic here on the high E string and we can see that it's bang on, it's uh, right in the middle. And then we fret the 12th fret on the high E string. And it's pretty much on, so we don't need to adjust it, at least not for now. And then we do the B string. Okay. B string is a little bit sharp, so what we need to do is that we need to lengthen the scale length. So we need to get the uh, subtle a bit closer. So what happens here is... Harmonic, that on. Still a little bit sharp. Let's try one more time. So pretty close and um, you should do that to all six strings. Um, once you've done that your setup should be pretty complete and then you can sort of fine tune, fine adjust some things. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it answers some of your questions. Um, Please let me know in the comments below how it's going with your guitars, uh, with your setups, etc. And if you're finding these tips helpful. And if you have any further questions, obviously let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I might do another video like this on my Gibson Les Paul very soon, because as we discussed earlier, the settings and the specs for a Gibson are completely different, so the Gibson would need um, a whole video on its own. Thank you all for watching and I will see you again very soon.